In this video I'm going to show you quickly how to use ChatGPT for all the new Omni model um, to analyze a stock. So we are going to use uh, NVIDIA Corporation and, and we will analyze the stock doing quant quantitative and financial analysis. And actually this is kind of the kind of work that a financial analyst entry level or even mid level would do um, at a firm uh, in the United States. A salary, salary for such a position would be between 60 and 110,000 uh, depends annually. So ChatGPT is already creating massive value and you will see the analysis is pretty good. Okay, so we are going to analyze the NVIDIA Corporation that has a huge bull run uh, with things that we have recently um, launched some NVIDIA videos, valuations. Actually, I did the valuation myself and then later I figured out that ChatGPT can also do great analysis. Uh, it is not as bullish as I am on NVIDIA, but I mean, um, many, many people are not as bullish as I am uh, on NVIDIA. So let's dive right into the analysis. We are going to use ChatGPT 4.0. So first of all, we open the Yahoo Finance page uh, for NVIDIA. We go to statistics. And you can do this with any stock, right? You can, you can use it as you go to first quick analysis uh, creator. You take a screenshot of the full page. You copy the page. You put it here just into the model. You, gi you give the model basically the access to the full page. Uh, it needs to upload. It and then you simply messages analyze the stock, give me a unique perspective on whether it's overvalued or undervalued, assuming a 15% discount rate. I always use 15% discount rates. Um, so if you are, um, because this just gives me some margin of safety. So this means that I could alternatively invest my capital at 15%. Um, this builds in some, some level of uh, or mar margin of safety. Uh, yeah. Good. So let's let's see what what uh, ChatGPT does. It is very quick. It is a new Omni model, right? So it so it uh, like figures out the analysis. It basically goes over all these ratios, all these ratios, the market cap over time, uh, the trailing PE, forward PE, PEG ratio, price sales, price book, and so on. It goes over all this information and analyzes it. This is really impressive work and. Uh, so let's have a look at the analysis and we quickly read it so that we can understand whether it makes sense or not. So it extracts the correct uh, metrics, right? Or the trailing PE ratio and so on. Gives me some financial highlights. This is not an analysis yet. This is just information displayed. Now on the valuation perspective, it first goes over multiple like quick valuations like the PE ratio, trailing and forward PE. They are significantly higher. They suggest higher expectations for future growth. This is completely correct. Uh, PEG ratio, PEG ratio, is like a, it analyzes the growth of a stock um, in relation to its price. And um, yeah, it suggests that the, that the stock is trading at a premium relative to the growth rate. So this is considered overvalued as well, according to the PEG or PEG ratio. And uh, the price sales and price book ratios are also high. Also here, uh, it suggests like it gives us a quick estimation. But we, uh, let's, I always like to do discounted cash flow analysis because I think like Warren Buffett, um, the Warren Buffett way of like doing implicitly or explicitly a discounted cash flow analysis, like value a business as all the future cash flows that flow into this business. I think this is the right way to, to, to value uh, any company. But future cash flows obviously are not as um, uh, are, are not as important as present cash flows. So cash flows in year one, two, three are more important than cash flows in year 20, 21, 22. Why? Because the future cash flows you don't have yet. So you cannot invest them yet, right? Having cash now is, uh, is more, uh, has, has a higher value for you than having cash in the future. That's why we apply a discount rate of 15%. Okay, so it builds in this discounted cash flow, this, this growth rate here, they assume they start with a leverage free cash flow of 19.87 billion. And remember, I just put in, I just put in a screenshot of this site, right? This, this is like, it, it, it is a stock analysis is really great. Just using the screenshot of this site, right? 19.87, it used this uh, free cash flow rate. And then it assumes for five, year, five years, a growth rate of 20% and a discount rate of 15%. And um, 
Also a terminal value, so it assumes there's a terminal growth rate of uh, 3%. You can see this here. And uh, it determined that the present value based on these cash flows is only 211 billion, right? <laughs> so if you would value NVIDIA this way, we would assume that um, the total present value, like uh, 300 billion, 323 billion, uh, it's significantly overvalued based on this analysis, right? If you assume that NVIDIA only grows by 20% for five years and you have a relatively high discount of cash, uh, cash flow um, uh, discount rate um, of 15%, then this would be considered really overvalued. But now the magic happens. So if you, if you, you, now you can ask it, please figure out the growth assumptions implicit in the market cap, assuming a growth period of 10 years, right? It doesn't only grow for five years, NVIDIA. Uh, so we are at the, in the beginning of a long-term growth phase for AI training and AI compute. So we want to have something more long-term. Uh, so and now we want to find out what the market thinks is the growth rate of NVIDIA. And, um, and yeah, we do this, like it, we, we ask it to do it for different growth rates until it finds the growth rate assumed by the market. So until we find the, the estimated intrinsic value. So it does this discounted cash flow analysis repeatedly until we find the estimated intrinsic value of uh, like 2 trillion or so, like the current market cap of NVIDIA. What is the current market cap of NVIDIA? Yeah, 2.27 trillion. Okay, so let's ask you this question. And you see like the new uh, 4.0 model is pretty quick, I would say, in, the, in, in this regard, right? So it creates a Python script and then it executes the Python script, I hope. Yeah, let's calculate. So now it first it creates the Python script. Uh, it um, it starts with the current leverage free cash flow cash flow rate of roughly 20 billion, what they are making in a year. It assumes a terminal growth rate of 3% over the, like after the 10 years. Um, I think this is quite conservative. And um, then it goes over like different, uh, different growth rates until it finds the net present value with the market cap alignment, right? And, um, yeah, just running the script gives us the implicit growth rate of 42.77%. Like this is the uh, this is the assumed growth rate of the Nvidia stock. So it can give you this kind of information. This is really valuable information, and you can use it for any company. So let's com let's compare. Let's let's do the same for say Google or Alphabet. So we go to Alphabet, Statistics. We get us a screenshot of the whole page. Again, we copy it. We can insert it now. And now, now do the same analysis for Alphabet stock. Again, we, we just give him the raw data as a screenshot, very simple to do. And um, yeah, and Google currently has a market cap of 2.81. Is this true? Yeah, it's true. Okay, so it uses the right data. Okay, um, so it uses the same data, valuation perspective, and it uh, it also uses the same Python script to find the implicit growth rate for Alphabet. And you can see the implicit growth rate based on a 15% discount rate and the current market cap of 2.18 trillion is approximately 26.4% annually. So it assumes Google, Google is growing by 26% annually. Uh, and yeah, that's why like the market doesn't assume that Google is growing as quickly as Nvidia, obviously. Okay, so I just wanted to share this, this general approach. I think it's a, it's a very useful uh, way to look at it. I would also agree like NVIDIA with a 40% growth rate, it has very high baked, uh, baked in growth assumptions. And this could basically, um, like if there is any, if the NVIDIA doesn't manage to grow in a given year by 42%, we will see a massive crash of the NVIDIA stock. Uh, of course, if they would now maybe 
come up with growth rates of 60% or so, we would see an explosion of the stock. So it's very sensitive to the growth rates uh, that they release quarter over quarter. Okay, but I just wanted to share this general method, just take a screenshot and ask it to do this kind of analysis um, to, to figure out uh, the discounted cash flow analysis and figure out the growth rate implicit, um, implicitly baked in by the marketplace. Thanks for watching. If you um, want, to, want to stay informed, be on the right side of change, then uh, check out the Finkster YouTube channel. We have many, many interesting videos on um, financial matters. Things to YouTube. Um, we have many, many interesting videos on, uh, for example, AI. Hey, welcome to Things. It's great having you. Um, things like the vulnerabilities um, of Nvidia, the strength of Nvidia, how big the AI market can get, how much Meta spends for AGI. So we have many of those uh, kind of disruptive innovation. Uh, videos uh, because why because this is what I what I'm in what I enjoy doing okay thanks for watching and see you in